welcome to Pyramid Knits. I'm so glad you guys have stopped by to join me this afternoon. Um, it is Sunday afternoon here. I'm just having a little knit here with my buddy Conan. Um, I set up the camera there because I was like, how nice to have the cat sleeping next to me the whole time. And then he leaves, of course. Of course. <laughs> He's got better things to do. Um, anyway, yes, welcome to Pyramid Knits. I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, my name is Liz. I am a knitter and a natural dyer, primarily, uh, and I am coming to you from my home outside of Taos, New Mexico. Uh, I am the dyer behind Pyramid Dye Works, which is a natural dyed yarn that I sell over on Etsy. Uh, you can find me there as Pyramid Dye Works. You can also find me on Instagram as Pyramid Dye Works. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's where you can connect with me outside of the YouTubes. Um, yeah, it's been about a month since I visited with you guys. I have, I felt like I, I needed to check in before now, but, um, I just haven't had the time. It's just been, it's been a really busy, busy month. Um, one of those months where like everything is so busy, but then you don't understand how you haven't accomplished anything. Do you know what I mean? Just like, how do I have no time and nothing has gotten done? <laughs> That's what July has felt like to me. Um, yeah. Anyway. <sighs> yeah, so it's like the end of July. That's a little wild. Um, I met up with a friend of mine yesterday who's a teacher, and she's getting ready to go back to school in like a week, a week and a half or something. Whew. Residual anxiety from childhood, like, oh god, you have to go back to school. <sighs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess the flip side of that is that I don't get a summer vacation anymore. <laughs> I've just been working the whole time, so what else? Anyhow, um, yeah, so it, it's Sunday afternoon here. Um, I did do a little bit of my day job work earlier, um, got, got a few things done. Uh, and so now I'm just kind of chilling out and enjoying the afternoon. Uh, the clouds are really building up outside. Um, it looks like there's rain kind of all around us. Uh, so I would not be surprised if I get a little monsoon rain shower this afternoon. Uh, it has been raining a lot here, which is great. Uh, I live in the high desert and we normally do our rainiest months are July and August um, and we get summer monsoon rains. Um, yeah, and they are here. They are here. Um, everybody's saying it's like the best summer rains we've had in, you know, several years. Uh, so that's really nice. Like I haven't had to water my garden like hardly at all because it just rains every day at three o'clock. <laughs> um, that's not to say that my garden is doing well, but it is getting watered by the sky, which is nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm discovering a lot of pests in my garden this year that I've never had to deal with before. Uh, grasshoppers, gophers, all those G animals. Not cool. Not cool. Um, yeah, I've lost quite a few plants this year. It's pretty sad. Oh, but we'll just carry on and try again next season, right? Um, I was going to show you guys a, a little tour of my garden since I showed you a tour of my garden last time. Um, and honestly, I went and I walked through yesterday and I realized, you know what? This looks terrible. Like, <laughs> nothing, nothing really looks better than last time. And yeah. Maybe we'll go back out there when there's actually like food growing. Um, I had very bad timing on my garden this year and I was just too late with everything. So I had a really great spring garden. I got all that stuff in on time and then I was just like lazy and depressed, honestly. And I didn't get my summer stuff in until like a month later than I should have. So I'm in this weird, um, like crux right now where I don't have any food in my garden. 
I have a little bit of lettuce still that hasn't bolted yet that I can eat. Uh, but none of the summer stuff has come online yet, you know. Uh, I have some tiny, like, green tomatoes that are starting to come in. It's an itty-bitty little squashes, but, like, none of my summer stuff is going yet. So, yeah, I'm kind of in a little no-man's land as far as my vegetable garden goes. Um, since it's Sunday afternoon and I don't have anything else to do but sit here and get with you guys, I'm having a beer. Uh, Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA. It's delicious. One of my faves. West Coast Hop Girl. What can I say? Um, yeah, so you're here for knitting. I'm wearing a knitted cardigan. Um, I love this cardigan. It's the Oregon Coast cardigan. It is probably the most challenging thing I have ever knit. Um, I made it probably five years ago. Um, it's this really intense all over lace pattern in lace weight yarn. Uh, that it, it's actually yoked um, and the designer set it up that the decreases take out entire chunks of the pattern. So there's no seams. It's all completely contiguous. It's uh, grafted under the sleeves even. Um, I, <laughs> I do remember when I was making this sweater. Uh, I did the math incorrectly and I put the sleeves on in the wrong spot. which resulted in me having to unpick Kitchener in lace. That was a doozy, y'all. That was a big doozy. But I did it. I made it through. It got done. It's like, it's the best. I love it so much. Um, I knit it out of Knit Picks Shadow Lace, I believe, which is a 100% wool. Um, I don't recall the colorway name, but it's this lovely, lovely gray that whenever you get really up close to it, you can see there's a lot of purple undertones to it, um, which is just gorgeous. I just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I did make some modifications to this. The pattern didn't actually have any sleeve decreases, but I added in a lot of sleeve decreases because I wanted it to fit a little bit more snugly and I'm very glad that I did that. Um, the mental fortitude and mathematics it took to figure that out was a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, yeah, but it's, it's great. I love this sweater. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I'd wear the pattern just because I had so much trouble with it. Um, Although I, it was a while back, like it might make more sense to me now that I'm more experienced, but um, yeah, it, it was a big challenge for me to, to pull this one off. But it is the perfect summer sweater with the half sleeves. It's all lace. It's lightweight, but it's wool. I can just stuff it in my bag and especially on days like this, which we have every day in the summer. When the clouds roll in and the rains come in, all of a sudden in the afternoon, it goes from about 80, 85 degrees to like 65, 70 degrees and it starts raining. Um, so I, I finally pulled this out yesterday. Um, when I went out into town, I knew I was going to be out through the afternoon. Um, yeah, and sure enough, you know, those monsoons rolled in and I pulled out my little lacy wool cardigan and I was just perfect. <laughs> So you may have noticed that I am knitting on a pair of socks here that are not a pair of socks that I was knitting on last time uh, because I finished those socks and they have been gifted to their recipients. So I don't have them to show to you, but um, I do believe I had, they were almost done, I think, when I showed them last time. Uh, <laughs> but they have become affectionately referred to by myself as the poop socks uh, because the color <laughs> that I dyed with uh, Coriopsis flowers over dyed with walnut um, was a beautiful, lovely shade of yellowish brown. And when I say perfectly lovely shade, I do mean that. It's it's gorgeous. It's a lovely color, but it does look a lot like blue. It does. Um, <laughs> anyway, I 
gave them to their recipient and the first thing she said to me was, oh my god, I love the color. <laughs> so that was, that's a win. That is a win. That the first thing she said that. <clears throat> um, and it's so funny, we, we were out uh, and sitting outside in a, a little restaurant and um, somebody she knew walked, walked in and, you know, very knitworthy friend. She was like showing off the socks to everybody who walked by. I was like, thank you. You will get more knitwear. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, but one of her friends uh, came in while we were sitting there and she's like, oh, hey, let's check out these socks. Um, and the very first thing out of his mouth was, oh my God, that color is perfect for you. <laughs> so poop color socks for the win. Definitely. Um, I do have one other stain of it. Uh, it was just kind of a one-off dye project. Um, so I think I'm going to pop that up in my shop. Uh, so by the time this is live, there should be a single skein of the hoop yarn in the shop if anybody wants to also enjoy the lovely yellowish brown color that is So beautiful, yet reminiscent of poop. <laughs> what do you guys think? Here it is. I think it's beautiful. So, uh, gift knitting success, natural dye success. And uh, that means that I have more things to knit for this person. Uh, the person that I gave the socks to is my tattoo artist. <laughs> um, I am getting some work done and I made the socks for her as a tip uh, for my first session and um, she saw <laughs> she saw my ranunculus on Instagram and she wants one. So <laughs> uh, in, in the grand tradition of ranunculus knitting I'm going to be knitting my second ridiculous very soon. <laughs> um, and then we were talking about it and she was kind of saying how she likes uh, the big knits, you know, like the ridiculous that are, it's thinner yarn on big needles, it's nice and open and drapey, um, that she really liked that style. And I was like, ooh, I know another one. Um, Kat from Heather and Hops has knit half a dozen ranunculuses, ranunculi, <laughs> at least. Um, and there's another sweater that she knits all the time, too, which whenever my friend said this, I immediately thought of it, uh, which is the Varku sweater, which I'll put in here. Um, so I'm going to need to make her that, too. <laughs> I haven't decided on the yarns that I'm going to use yet, or if I'm going to do mohair or alpaca, uh, because I don't know what her sensitivity is going to be to that kind of fiber and she doesn't know what her sensitivity is going to be to that kind of fiber. Um, so I'm kind of thinking I might go with alpaca instead of mohair, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you guys have any experience or uh, suggestions for gift knitting with mohair, is that a bad idea? Um, I'm not sure. So anyway, uh, yeah, I will be um, knitting up another ridiculous and a Varpu in the next couple of months, probably, uh, so that I can help get this lovely guy funded. <laughs> yeah, so that's getting there. Oh, I'll have to do a close up, I guess. <laughs> So the, that's my only FO is those socks, um, which has led to two more pending works of progress. <laughs> so that brings me to my actual whips. Um, actually, before I show you the whips, I'm going to tell you, I went on a hermitage retreat at the beginning of this month, at the end of June, beginning of July. Um, 
where I went up to the Llama Foundation, which is 45 minutes north of me, basically. Uh, which, um, if you're familiar with Ram Dass, uh, he wrote Be Here Now in the 70s? I think it came out in the 70s. <laughs> Maybe it was the 60s, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to double check. Anyway. Uh, he wrote that book whenever he was living up there. He helped found it. Um, yeah, he's... Anyway. It's an old, old school meditation Hindi retreat, you know? <laughs> uh, and they have a couple of cabins out there that you can rent out for personal retreats. So I went and I did that for four or five days. Um, and... Literally, you're just in a little hut. <laughs> it was it was a straw bale one room cabin with a little porch on the front, um, in a little scrub oak forest on the side of a mountain, and you're just there by yourself, and it's your time to reflect, reconnect, uh, grow. You know, um, I spent my time reading. I read hundreds of pages. <laughs> uh, knitting. I knit thousands of stitches. <laughs> uh, meditating, doing yoga, walking on the mountainside. Um, it was, it was gorgeous. It was magical. <sighs> Rainbows and just, yeah, all, all the good things. I, I came back feeling very refreshed. Um, more confident in my self and my path and where I'm going in life and you know I, I sort of needed that little bit of a recalibration and that sort of like compass setting you know what I mean um, I did turn 40 this spring <laughs> uh, so I think that that prompted it as well uh, to just kind of have a moment for myself also I'm just going totally off tangent here but um I have for the last several years on my birthday done an extended meditation retreat. Um, and last year was the first year that I hadn't done it in a very long time. Uh, it's COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I was feeling the need to have some time to have some time to meditate and not have anything else I had to go do because that's always the hardest thing. When you're trying to meditate at home and not at a at a center or like a retreat or with a group or something it's that voice that keeps coming in saying you need to defrost that chicken you need to do the dishes you better make the bed don't forget to send that email and the to-do list starts piling up um yeah so it was nice to get away from the to-do list and get away from everything for a few days uh, and live a very simple life for a few days. Um, so, of course, I packed a lot of knitting. And I uh, knit pretty obsessively. I have been knitting pretty obsessively since I've gotten home. Uh, so I, I cast this one on right before I went to the retreat uh, so that I would have something interesting to work on. I almost didn't take it. I thought it might have been too complicated. But I'm glad that I did. It's The Ghost Horses by Caitlin Hunter. Y'all, what? <laughs> this thing is amazing. Can you see the little horsies? Yeah, I mean, it obviously needs a good blocking. But, um, yeah. Uh, this was just such an addictive knit, and it still is. Um, However, the last time I was knitting on this, I went ahead and I divided for the sleeves in the body. And I realized that I put, I put the sleeves in the wrong spot. Put the sleeves in the wrong spot. Um, and I have just been too annoyed by it to pick back the one row and recount it and make sure I put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> um, I'm normally very good whenever I start a project about going through my pattern and highlighting the numbers for my size all the way through and like figuring out the math before I start the project. If I know I, I wanna add extra increases or decreases or something, um, I'll do the math before I cast on so that 
I can figure all of that out when it's fresh in my brain. I've got the gauge in my brain. I've got my calculator out. Um, and I can just, you know, note like four extra decreases, whatever. Uh, and I didn't do that this time. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, I'm not making any modifications, but I didn't highlight my size, and I I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I think I, I followed the directions for the wrong size for putting the uh, sleeves on, so they are a little bit cattywampus lopsided. So I just need to uh, pick that back, put these sleeve stitches back on the needles, and uh, redo that row division the correct spot. Um, and then I'm sure I will just fly through the body now that these rows are not so long. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm a little on the fence. I don't have a ton of the contrasting color. I only got one ball of it. So this is all I have, which will definitely be enough for the body, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for the sleeves. Uh, the pattern itself has the sleeves go down about half sleeves. Uh, which is perfect. That's right. Um, I think for this, this kind of, uh, weight and this type of fabric that that would be just like perfect right on. Uh, so <laughs> the yarns that I'm using, the main color is Queensland United, which is 55% wool, 45% cotton. I believe. So it's a wool cotton blend. Uh, it's a sport weight. And this other one that I'm using is also a uh, Queensland yarn. And it's Queensland Perth. Uh, the color weight is the Big Sandy, the Great Sandy. It's Australian, so it's like the desert color, right? <laughs> Interior Australia. Um, yeah, and the main color, I believe, is just called Dove. Uh, yeah, so this yarn changes color on its own. I'm not having to do any of that. It's just two colors all the way around. Uh, I really find, found this pattern quite simple and relaxing up until I got to the horses. <laughs> and then it got very complicated, and I had to pay a lot of attention. Um, yeah, so the other thing that happened with this... And with my other color work project that I'm working on is a few weeks ago, Knitting Traditions came out with a video, a little video tutorial, just a short one, of how she knits English style, the left hand, right? English continental, that's how it goes. Um, and I have always had trouble with my tension working with my left hand. I've just never been able to figure out the right way to put the yarn in my hand. It's just, it's always in a really stark contrast to the tension I get on my right hand. So I watched this video of hers and it, it's one of those things all of this time I keep thinking there's got to be just some simple instruction that would make this click for me. Like there has to be some way to get this tension more even. I've tried so many different things. I've tried, you know, knitting inside out. I've switched to bamboo needles. I've got upsides, it's like downs, anything you can think of. And I watched this video and she said the thing. She said the thing that just made it make sense. <laughs> and I will link it down below. Uh, but the thing that she said that nobody's ever told me before because I, I don't know really anybody who knits like in real life. <laughs> like circles um you know there's a few people who like dabble or whatever but nobody is crazy like I am um except for you guys thank you <laughs> thank you for being here uh yeah but she said with the left hand when you <laughs> sorry I'm trying to visualize it when you bring your finger forward it tightens the stitch if you take your yarn your finger with the yarn to the back and loosens the stitch up. And it's just like mind blown moment. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. So I took that advice and 
you know, it's taken a little bit of time, but as I've been knitting through this, the color work is getting so much better and so much more even. Um, I'll throw in a close up here. You can see the difference between up here towards the top, uh, whenever I was still starting out and I <laughs> hadn't figured that part out yet, um, that these, uh, these lines are quite obvious where the color changes in the same spot for several rows in order. Um, that you can see it's there's quite a bit of uh, tension discrepancy up here. You can see the colored stitches are kind of raised up more. The white stitches feel like they're recessed a little bit because they're tighter and the colored stitches are looser, right? So then as you go further down, we have the same style motif down here with the columns of stitches going over several rows. <laughs> Look how much closer that tension is. I mean, you can still see that the color is a little bit looser than the white yarn, but it's laying flat. So in the spirit of not being able to stop any color work, this was an impulse cast on last time. Um, it's grown a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is my pine bow cowl. Um, I used up all of my gold yarn, so I switched to pink. <laughs> um, I have had this yarn, I, I dyed this yarn, it's all naturally dyed, um, except for the neutral, that's been dyed. Uh, the neutral is um, Elsa wool, it's a sport weight cormo. It's lovely. Um, I'm really in love with uh, cormo. It's just, it's so soft. Uh, so the colors I did dye myself. This orange is from Cota Flower, which is a wildflower that grows here in northern New Mexico. Um, it is blooming right now. <sighs> I hope that I can get out to her some. Um, the elevation where I live is a bit too high for it to grow, so I have to drive about an hour um, to where it does grow, but it's just like all of the front sides, you know. Um, and this pink is done out of avocado. Uh, and I have another one too, let me grab it, oh. and I also have this blue that I dyed out of indigo. So these, these three colors of yarn I have had sitting in my living room in like a little decorative bowl just as decor, um, just a few pretty naturally dyed yarns that were wound up into cakes that were just sitting in a bowl and looked pretty. Uh, so I finally decided to use them. And I don't know that I will get to the blue. Uh, I'm, the pink might be enough to have this wrap around my neck twice, which I'm totally fine with because <laughs> I mentioned this on my Instagram. Uh, it totally reminds me of that scene from The Shining uh, where <laughs> Shelley Duvall is like walking through the hotel. She's getting the tour and she says, oh, well, pink and gold are my favorite colors. <laughs> Just cracks me up so much. Um, but for real, like pink and gold, y'all. Yeah, I'm down with it. Uh, so it may just be a pink and gold cowl. It may be pink and gold and blue. We'll see. I'll just keep knitting. Um, yeah, super addictive, super simple pattern. Like it just goes round and round forever and it's lovely. And you don't even have to think about it. So yeah, this is a super, super fun knit. And again, I can totally see the difference in my tension from when I started to where I am now. Um, it's laying much flatter. It's not puckering as much. Um, thank you, Knitting Traditions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you have changed my knitting life. Those Scandinavians, they know what they're doing. You, know? you just need somebody to explain it to you once and you get you get it worded the right way finally and it's like ugh, unlocks unlocks the box you know the knowledge box anyway. I have one other whip I was working on it when you guys came and joined me so I'm calling these my thunder socks um, it is oh Dear, I just pulled my needle out of my socks. Oopsie. That was not the right side to pull. <laughs> oh no. 
Ugh. Gonna have to go back and fix these now. Um, not the first time I've done this today. I pulled the needle out of my pine bow cowl too. Um, I left it just sitting on the couch yesterday. Which, lazy. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and then I fell asleep on the couch last night and when I came out this morning and I was like, oh, my knitting's all like strewn about and I was just sleeping on it. That's weird. <laughs> oh, it was down on my feet. But, um, anyway, I picked it up and yeah, one of the needles was like out of the work. It's like, Ooh, oopsie, oopsie daisy. I might have to cut this part out because it's taking me a minute to get that across. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so this is uh, Dreams in Color. Oh my God, I just did it again. So this yarn is from a sock set. Excuse me. Um, I bought it whenever I was on vacation pre-COVID. <laughs> I went out to visit a friend of mine who lived in Half Moon Bay, California. And... Uh, yeah, I had an afternoon, you know, where she had to work. So I got to borrow the car and go into town and I found the yarn shop, <laughs> of course. And I found this sock set and I, I've never worked from a sock set before. Um, but I, I mean, the colors, like, come on, come on. I, I could not resist. <laughs> uh, so it is a dream in color yarn, smooshy sock set. 85% uh, superwash merino, 50% nylon, 420 yards of the main color, 100 yards of the contrasting color. Uh, so it is, the main color is cloud to ground. Yeah, it's just cloud to ground. Um, so yeah, I'm calling them my thunder socks because <laughs> that's obviously supposed to be the thunderstorm. And the uh, contrasting color is gold experience which I love gold, so I kind of had to, kind of had to. Um, I was a little bit unsure about this yarn when it was in the cake because it just looks a little bit so crazy and like so many colors. And I was like, I don't know if this is really going to be my style so much, but like I had to buy it because gold. <laughs> Also, at the time that uh, Dunder Knit was doing her glorious gold along, or the blame Dunder Knit. Anyway, I blamed her for buying gold yarn, which, which is what it came down to. Oh, hi, Cody. That's sweet. He's come to grace us with his presence again. Oh, good. <laughs> He's just sweet. such a little snuggler. So this is the first sock. Uh, it's kind of almost done. I have so much yardage in the main color that I want to make these a little bit tall. Uh, at least, you know, like boot socks or something. So I'll probably go a few more inches and then do a uh, one by one cuff uh, in the gold and then cast on my second sock and get to going. Um, yeah, Zoom socks. Hanging out with friends socks. So these are going pretty quick. It's nice. Very nice. Um, I feel like socks languish with me quite often because they're usually sort of like an in my purse project and I only work on it like when I'm out. Uh, out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, with, you know, the Zoom calls, um, it helps. <laughs> you know, like I basically knit the whole foot and the whole leg like in a day, like one day here and like one day here. Um, yeah, so these are going super fast. Just plain vanilla round and round. That's the way I like it. Additionally, the friend that I went to go and visit uh, did pass from COVID two, three months after I saw her. Um, and part of my tattoo here is in memory of her. Um, so I remember to go flow and 
go where life takes me and don't fight it so much. Be happy and fall in love with where you are. That's what she always used to say. Fall in love with where you are. That and such is life. Such is life. So that'll be a nice little extra memory um, that I got these when I went to go visit her. And I'm so glad I went to go visit her. Visit your friends when you can. Because you never know when it might be the last time. Sorry for that downer. But hey, such is life. Um, yeah, so that's that's all of my whips. Um, I feel like I've been knitting just like constantly because I have been doing like constantly on these two or three projects. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might have to come back out here later. Let's just get this part done. So spinning. That's the other thing I've been doing. Um, I've got a couple skeins of hand spun to show you guys. Check it. So this one, I was working on this last time. It is a uh, chain ply from... The, the fiber is from Harrisville Designs. The colorway is called Wood Smoke. And yeah, it's a three ply chain ply, uh, about a worsted weight, it seems, which is what I was going for. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, it's worsted prep. I'm sorry, woolen prep, woolen spun. Uh, I did this long draw. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. It feels really good and balanced. Um, I still have more of this fiber so I can make some more of this yarn and my plan with this is to make a pillow cover for my couch. Uh, I have a secondary color that I've already spun up and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the pillowcase. I might, I might crochet it. I might just do like garter stitch stripes or something. I don't know, I want it to be pretty simple because it's quite, quite a textured yarn. <laughs> oh, and that's how we get holes in our sweaters. <laughs> uh, it has quite a textured yarn. There's lots of little uh, colored depths in here and everything. Um, but yeah, so I have a little bit more spinning to do with this and then, you know, hopefully whip up a pillow, pillow cover for my couch. Um, I had started knitting it a while ago and I was doing a double seed stitch and I don't know, I, I feel like even that was too much texture and I think probably my needle size was a little bit too big. Um, I just wasn't liking the fabric I was getting so I'm going to frog that and now that I have the second color ready to go, um, I can do some stripes or incorporate them both at the same time. Um, I was going to do color blocking or something but Anyway, so that's spin number one. Um, it's about 110, 115 yards. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head. I did write it down, but yeah. So I'm happy with that. And this one, I am not happy with. <laughs> this is uh, from Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. They're Wool of the Andes fiber. Oh, Forest Heather is probably the color writing. Um, I also did this as a three ply. It is worsted prep, worsted spun. My intention for this was to do a nice plump three ply uh, that I could do like a cabled hat out of or something. Um, but I definitely overspun it. <laughs> it's looking a little bit better now, but there's just like, there's all these little twists and coils where it's just like way too much. Um, it's a lot better now that I've given it a soak and let it hang to dry. Um, but honestly, like, oh, it's such a mess. <laughs> it's just such a mess. <laughs> oh dear. I'll have to deal with that later. Anyway, I, I think maybe if I soaked it one more time and I waited it, 
that, you know, hung a weight on the bottom of it, that it might help get some more of those coils out. Um, and it might be a usable yarn. But at this point, I don't really think it's even that functional of a yarn to like use in a project. I don't know. It's looking a lot better. <laughs> A lot better right now than it did the other day. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll give it another soak. Maybe I'll stuff it in a pillow. I don't know. Any, any thoughts, y'all? Is there a way to save an overspun scam yarn? It's how you learn, you know? That is how you learn. I'm going to keep making mistakes. Now I know not to do that again. So yeah, got a couple skeins in spinning. Um, I've been working on some sewing projects, but I don't really have anything uh, to a point to share. Uh, I did sew up a muslin for the skirt that I'm planning on making this morning, and the fit was good, so I'm good to cut out my proper fabric. Uh, so I know I'll, I'll have a skirt to show you guys next time, um, a sewing skirt. And yeah, hopefully a ranunculus or a barfu because I need to do that so I can get some money off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. How are you guys doing? Things have been so crazy. Like, I mean, obviously, just world's going to hell in a basket, right? Um, yeah, so much crazy climate stuff this summer. Um, we have been really fortunate here. It has just been a lovely summer. It's been cool. It's been rainy. It's just like everything you want. Um, those big heat domes that keep like sitting on the West Coast. I think what happens is we're on the very edge of it here in New Mexico. Um, so all the cooler air just kind of gets pushed over. So whenever there have been these crazy heat waves on the West Coast, we actually cool down like 10, 20 degrees. Um, it's weird. And I'm like, I live in the desert. Like I should be dying of thirst or something, right? But it just keeps raining. So whatever, y'all. Um, I, I do collect rainwater for my natural dyes. Um, I have a rainwater catchment off of my back porch, which is where I have my little dye studio. And I was almost out of water um, after I dyed everything that I put up in the shop update for the summer. I went through all of my water that I had stored. Uh, but the last few weeks with the rains that we've had, it's like three quarters full again. It's so right. Um, I've got a 275 gallon tank out there which I'd love to expand on, but I just don't have the, I don't have the gutters hooked up to enough surface area to fill that much. Uh, yeah. Projects. Projects. Anywho, my water catchment is filling back up, which means I'm going to be able to do some more dyeing soon, which, oh my God, you guys. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I have been gifted fleeces, plural. Oh my God. I literally have pounds and pounds and pounds of raw fleece in my car right now. It's living in my car because <laughs> I don't have nowhere to put it in my house. <laughs> I got it. Oh God. I got to go to Walmart tomorrow or something I really need to go to Walmart. Um, and get some big storage bins so I can bring it in the house and put them in those. Um, but I'm super excited because I want to experiment with natural dyeing fleeces and then blending the colors after the fact to make dyed in the wool natural dyes. Y'all, it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work, but it sounds so much fun. I'm like so excited about this. So I have a bunch of raw fleece now to play with and practice with. Um, so yeah, hopefully some fun dye experiments are going to be coming my slash your way. <laughs> um, 
yeah, and uh, thanks so much for joining me today. It's so nice to spend an afternoon with y'all. Um, yeah, I kind of finished up things early today, and it's a lot just sitting around crafting. I might as well share my crafts. So, thank you for indulging me. <laughs> Um, I'd love to see what y'all are making. If any of you have a podcast, like, let me know. Um, and yeah, keep, keep having summertime or winter time, depending. Enjoying your time. Enjoy your time. Fall in love with where you are. And yeah. Uh, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you on a little, uh, hike walk that I did with my dogs the other day. We went up in the mountains a little bit to uh, the backside of a mole canyon. It's kind of like a little local's um, hidden spot. <laughs> so you're pretty much guaranteed not to see other people there. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You guys will see. Um, it's not far from town. It's easy to just kind of pop up there for an hour or so and go for a walk. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. It's one of my favorite spots here um, in Northern New Mexico. And yeah, I will see you guys uh, next time, probably in about a month. Happy crafting. Um, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy. Uh, keep yourselves safe and healthy. Get your vaccine, wear a mask too, whatever. Um, eat good food, exercise, get some sleep, drink some water, take care of yourself. Cheers, till next time.